Fudging! This term originates from changing the outcome of a die roll, and thus fudging the result. There's more to it though, there's a lot of other ways in which this technique occurs. Today I will make the case of why, as a DM, you should not fudge, or at least not often. Most of this video is based on an article from The Alexandrian, a great blog by Justin Alexander. He gives out a lot of fantastic DM advice, so I highly I highly recommend reading him. I'll link it in the comments and in the description. Welcome to Pack Tactics. I thought me critting all the time would be good storytelling. But before we start, let's get super duper cereal. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. It's grain-free cereal. It's delicious and fueling. This is a high-protein treat that can kickstart your day. There's zero sugar in it. It's gluten-free, all-natural flavors, and keto-friendly. Magic Spoon is great for a low-carb diet, and it comes in four different flavors. Gator tried them, and he loves it. Yummy! Magic Spoon has Gator's approval. What's your favorite gator? The fruity one! I also like the fruity one the best. Click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen to grab a variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal and try it today. Be sure to use the promo code PACKTACTICS at the checkout to get a $5 discount off any order. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash packtactics. By the way, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get some gator approved cereal today! Back to the video! So what else is fudging? Alexander says fudging is when a mechanical resolution tells you one thing and the DM chooses to ignore the rules and declares a different outcome. Here's some examples. The rogue has an epic crit and one-shots the boss. The DM prefers the rogue not to one-shot the boss and decides to change the hit points of the boss to be higher. The big bad evil guy fails their save against the party's casting of Dominate Monster. The DM believes this would lead to an anticlimactic end of the campaign and instead states that they make the save. A DM screen helps them fudge results, but a DM could very well change the bonus to a saving throw instead of the die itself. So you can fudge even without a DM screen. The Alexandrian article lays out four different reasons why a DM may want to fudge. Their justifications. All of them ultimately boils down to the DM not liking something that the resolution mechanics are telling them. Number one, railroading. The DM wanted the game to go a certain way, and by fudging they made a PC unable to do what the player wants. Alexander actually has an entire article on railroading, link below. I share his opinions that it's normally not a good thing. Number two, to prevent the character's death, or multiple death. Another topic Alexander has an article on. Number three, to make the story quote unquote better. Like a big bad guy dying too early in the campaign. Number four, to correct the mistake you've made. To quote, maybe you've been screwing up a mechanic for the whole fight and it's made things much harder for the players than it should have been. Or you accidentally doubled the number of guards when the fight started. Or going further back, maybe you just screwed up the encounter design or something that should have been easy for the players but turned out to be very difficult. So you fudge something to bring it back in line with what it was supposed to be or should have been. This is quite understandable. Mistakes happen, especially when there are so many things to think about. But the more you fudge, the more you'll fall into a trap and then the magic of the game is gone and everyone is playing movie mode. Alexander also talks about about a rule of thumb, one that has stuck with me for quite a long time. The more you fudge, the shittier you are as a GM, either because you are fudging or because you need to. You are either fudging to screw over your players or to fix something that has gone wrong. For example, a badly designed scenario, misread stat blocks, and so on. But as I said before, mistakes happen, which also means that sometimes fudging is okay, though that should be viewed as a failure. And that's not the end of the world. World, but you should consider trying to fix whatever led to that failure, instead of this repeatedly being something you need to stoop down to. Some things to consider, to quote, If you and or your players truly can't live with the outcome of a dice roll, then you have made a mistake by rolling the dice in the first place. You need to focus on fixing that problem. This extends to something as big as a character's death. If you don't want the characters to be able to die, why is a combat framed with death at its stake? 
You should try to figure out how to design robust scenarios that don't break while you're running them. And if there are rules in the game you aren't happy with, create house rules to fix those mechanics that are leading you to undesirable results. Another option is to swap to another system entirely, like Burning Wheel or Stars Without Number. There are a lot of wonderful systems out there, some even greater than 5th edition. You should definitely be careful if you fudge, because when the players find out, it robs the players of a legitimate sense of accomplishment and definitely deflates tension. To quote, it may fix an immediate problem, but it will inflict permanent damage on everything. The article finishes off with a sort of checklist the next time you feel it's necessary to fudge. I'll quote once more. First, I ask myself, is it truly necessary to fudge in this moment? Is it necessary to reject the improvisation prompt of the mechanical resolution's outcome? Or can you find a way to work with that outcome to create something interesting and enjoyable? At the stage of the resolution process where you're narrating outcome, you usually still have a lot of power as a GM. An easy example of this is falling forward instead of the PC falling in what they wanted to do. They succeed with a negative twist or consequence. But also, to a certain extent, just take a moment to second guess yourself. The outcome which you initially think cannot possibly happen, often happen. It's just not what you expected or would have done on your own volition. Try to push back that initial moment of rejection and really truly think about what the outcome would be and whether there's interesting and cool stuff that lies beyond that outcome. Second, ask yourself, can I just be open and honest with my players in this moment, instead of secretly fudging the outcome. Could you just explain to the players that, for example, you screwed up the encounter and things need to be retconned a bit? And maybe you can't. There are circumstances where you're better off plastering over the cracks of your mistake with a cheap magic trick instead of damaging the player's immediate immersion and engagement with the game world. It's not ideal, but sometimes that's the best you can do right now. You'll just have to learn from your mistakes and do better next time. Well, there you go. I really love this article. The Alexandrian did a great job on it. Please check out his blog and his YouTube channel. He makes some of the best DMing content out there and I feel he's underrated. So give him some love. Anyways, end the video. Bye bye!